have a composition of transformations, okay? A composition of transformation is the result. The result of applying two or more transformations okay the result of applying two or more transformations to a figure one after another Okay, one after another. So a composition, you guys deal with compositions in English class, yes? Or compound word in English class? Compound means two or more. So here we have two or more transformations happening to get my new image. Now, what are the three transformations we've talked about? Translation, rotation, and reflection. Okay, so if you have the point 2, negative 3, the point 2, negative 3, and you want to translate it by 4, negative 1, and negative 2, 3. What does that mean I'm doing when I say translate? What, what does translate mean? What is translation? What is a translation doing? Sliding. sliding. It's sliding the figure. Good. It's sliding the figure. So if I'm translating this point, 2, negative 3, okay? Here's 2, negative 3. This is point A. Okay? If I am translating that, the first thing I'm doing when I translate, I'm sliding. So that means I'm going to take this original point, <coughs> Sorry. And I'm going to add to the X and to the Y the translation that is happening. So I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to add 4 to it. I'm going to take negative 3 and I'm going to add negative 1 to it. 2 and 4 is 6. Negative 3 and negative 1 is negative 4. So my new point is 6, negative 4. 6, 2, 4, 6 negative 4. Here is my mapped point, okay? Now from there, I'm not done. I still have to do another translation, another translation of negative 2, 3. So I'm going to take 6 and add negative 2 to it. I'm going to take negative 4 and add 3 to it so that I get another new point of 4, negative 1. Now I'm at 4, negative 1. Here is my final solution. So this is the composition transformation that happened through translation. Okay? Okay, I'll, I'll help you with it after we're done. Okay, so that's how I do a um, transformation, a composition of transformations. It can be two translations. It could be a translation and a reflection. It could be a rotation and a reflection. It can be a double rotation. So you get my drift. As long as it's more than one thing happening. It could be four things in a row. Okay? Two or more. So that's an example of a translation. Let's talk about one that works with um, rotation. Okay? Let's say you want to rotate the point negative four, two. Rotate the point negative 4, 2 by 180 degrees, okay, and translate it okay, and you're going to translate it um, by 2, negative 1, okay. So if I graph this point So if I graph this point negative 4, 2, I'm going to graph it right here. 
there's point A. Now, if I tr um, rotate it 180 degrees, what does my rule tell me I do? What? You make the coordinates opposite of what they are. So instead of negative 4, 2, when I rotate by 180 degrees, I'm going to have the points 4, negative 2. And I can double check that because I can always graph it. And when I graph it, it should create a line through the origin, and that shows 180 degree rotation. Okay? You have to memorize those rules. Period. Geometry is a lot of memorization. We're going to give you stuff today you have to memorize too. So that is its mapped point. But now it says, time out, I need you to translate it by 2, 1, so that I have a composition of transformations happening. So if I'm going to translate it, that's a slide effect, which means I'm adding to the x and y. So I'm going to add 2 to 4, 4 plus 2, 6, and I'm going to add negative 1 to negative 2, negative 3. So my final point is 6, negative 3. 6, negative 3, and this is my final solution. So that is how you do compositions. Compositions is simply two or more things all together at one time to the same point or same image or whatever it is that you're doing. So you could do this with a triangle. You just have to apply it to every point in that triangle. Okay. I do have a question for you though. When you reflect something, if you reflect it on or um, if I reflect something over the y-axis but it's sitting on the y-axis, what happens to it? What? So if I'm saying, if I say here's a point right here, I want to reflect that on the y-axis, what happens to it? It's it a what? It stays. It stays. Because if I'm using the y-axis to reflect it, it's going to reflect back on itself, right? Okay? It's like when you draw on a mirror. Have you guys ever, like, written something on a mirror? Well, girls probably do it more than guys, like in the bathroom. So when you, write on, when you write on a mirror, sometimes you write encouraging things to yourself, like, in the morning. Like, have a good sleep. Just say. <laughs> when you write on a mirror. You'll find out later on. <laughs> when you write on a mirror. It happens a lot in college. Like, girls are always like, Hey, have fun today. And you're like, oh, thanks. You know, your roommate leaves you this note, and you're like, oh, cool. Uh, guys probably don't do that. But when you write on the mirror, okay, if you do this, if you can see right behind it. The reflection is literally right behind it. You can, like, see that. It's weird how that works. That's the same concept as if you are reflecting something on the y-axis or on the x-axis. It's reflecting on itself, so it's literally just on top of itself. Okay? So that's going to make a difference today when we talk about some stuff. So then, there is one type of composition that is special, and it's called a glide reflection. A glide reflection. What do you think glide reflection means that I do? A glide reflection. Okay? So a glide reflection is a special type of a comp composition of transformations. Lots of vocab, I know. What type of um, thing do we do when we glide something? What? What's another word for when we glide something? Mm, no, one of the three words that we've been using. Go for it. Shout it out. What was it? What? What was it? Translate. Translate. Oh, yeah, that's what it's called. Okay. You can shout things out. <laughs> it's okay, Sophia. So when you glide something, it's a translation. What is it? And, and it, the second part tells me what it is. It's a reflection. So a glide reflection is a translation, then a reflection happening. Okay? So a glide reflection consists of a translation parallel. Okay? A translation parallel to a given line. Followed by, okay, followed by a reflection across that line. So here's what it looks like. If I have the x and y axes like this, okay? And let's say, I'm not going to label this right now because I'm just going to give you a picture to show you what it looks like. 
Let's say I have a triangle that's like this, A, B, C. We'll just give it points. Okay. And let's say that I shift those, I glide this up first. Okay. And here's my triangle now. Okay. Mapped A, mapped B, mapped C. Okay. So what I did was I glided it along the y-axis, parallel to the y-axis. Do you see that? Okay. My final thing is going to happen like this. I'm going to get double mapped A, double mapped B, and double mapped C over here. So what I did, you're going to pretend those are perfect. What I did was glide, and then I reflected over there. So I glided it up the y-axis and reflected it over the y-axis. So I did something by shifting it parallel to a specific line and then flipping it over that same line I originally glided it parallel with. That's what a glide reflection is. So it's a slide and a flip, or it's a slide and a flip. Okay? That's what the definition of that is. With that being said, I'm going to give you two theorems today. Tomorrow we're going to finish this lesson with three other theorems. Yes? Does that line always have to be that? Does that always have to be what? The y or x axis. No. Good question. Good question. So no, it doesn't always have to be the y or x axis. If I have a line at y equals 3 and I slide it parallel to that line and then reflect it over that line, it still applies. Does that make sense? Okay. Very good question. So here's the deal. We're going to learn what this term means today, what a theorem is. Okay? A theorem is a mathematical statement established by means by a proof. Okay? Uh, a mathematical statement. Stop messing around. Established by means by a proof. Okay, so here's the deal. We've talked about a postulate. What's a postulate? Something that's just true, right? Like you just accept it to be true. A theorem has been proven to be true. That's the difference between them. A postulate we accept to be true. A theorem I can prove is true. Okay? So the first theorem we're going to look at is called Reflections and Parallel Lines Theorem. Here's the bad news for you. Good news if you're really good at memorizing stuff. When it comes to geometry, we're going to get into something called proofs. Remember how I told you we're going to have to do proofs and say, we can do this because of this. We can do this because of this. Well, theorems and postulates allow me to use those as like reasoning, reasons we can do things. Okay? The problem is you have to know what names they are and what they do. So you're going to have to memorize them. It's going to be a lot of memorization. But if you take them one section at a time and memorize them as we go, it will help. If you try to memorize them all at the last minute, it's not going to work. Okay? Every night, make some flashcards, make a quizlet. Study the vocab every night for 15 minutes, something like that, okay? I'm just warning you ahead of time, you're going to have to do stuff like that. So reflections in parallel lines theorem, because these names are not easy. Reflections in parallel lines theorem, like really, who named this? But it tells me exactly what it does, and I'm going to show you how. So there's a definition in words, and then there's a picture diagram too, which helps. Okay. So here's the third, first theorem we're talking about. Reflections and parallel lines theorem. And it tells us that two reflections across a pair of parallel lines is a translation. Two reflections across a pair of parallel lines is 
a rotation, or is a translation. The other portion that goes with this is this. Okay. The translation is twice the distance between the lines. Translation is twice the distance between the lines. So, if I have two parallel lines like this, and I have an image that looks like this, G, H, and I reflect it over that set of parallel lines, then I get an image that looks like this, map G, map H. If I reflect it again over this parallel line, I get G, H. Do you see how this is technically a slide? A reflection and a reflection gives me a slide. Okay, gives me a translation. This distance here is D. The distance from here to where I finished is 2D. So on your homework, for instance, I know there's a problem that says something like, it tells you like, the distance between two sets of parallel lines is 4. What is the total distance from the original image to the final mapped image? So you would do 4 times 2, which is 8, because it's twice the distance of the distance between the parallel lines. They are broken up into equal segments. Questions on this right now? Questions? Okay. Does it make sense how if you um, reflect something and then reflect it again with parallel lines that it's like a slide? Does that image make sense to you? And the last theorem we're going to look at today says this. It is two reflections across intersecting lines, theorem one. Two reflections across intersecting lines theorem one, which means tomorrow we will talk about theorem two, okay? If lines A and B intersect, if lines A and B intersect at point P, I'm going to draw a picture with it in a minute, at point P, then a reflection in B followed by a reflection in A okay, followed by a reflection in A is the same as a rotation about point P. So what that looks like is this. If I have a line, and I have another line, and they intersect here at point P. This is line A, this is line B, okay? And I have this image, a triangle, let's say, F, G, H, okay? I have this image, F, G, H, and I rotate it. Rotated, okay, over line P or B about point P, which means I would have to draw right my lines like that and rotate it, okay. This becomes map H, this becomes map F. Oh no, I'm doing a reflection, a reflection, okay, and this becomes map G. So I'm reflecting it over that diagonal line. I get this triangle. 
if I reflect it again over line A now, okay, I'm going to end up getting double reflection G, double reflection F, double reflection H, and I have created a rotation because look, this right here, well, would go and make 180 degrees because it makes a line. You have to pretend that my pictures are perfect, I'm sorry. Okay, so when I reflect something over two parallel lines, I have a translation that actually happened. When I reflect something over two lines that intersect, okay, I have a rotation that actually happened. Questions on those two? <clears throat> if not, what? No, that's not important. It's just wherever they intersect. Then you're going to do your math from the points that they give you. So, like, it will be a little bit better than what I have because it will be on a grid, right? And so then each point will have a specific number with it, like 3, 2, 4, 7, whatever. And then you'll just do your reflection, reflection, which gives you a rotation. Does that make sense? Okay. Other questions? Okay, let's get busy.